Before the era of modern science, people had a rather weird concept of the world. Well, you know, all these legends about the entire world resting on some kind of animals like elephants, whales, or turtles. But what if I told you there was a grain of truth in these legends? The Earth, of course, isn't carried by whales. However, a rather large piece of Earth once ended up on the turtle's back. This common snapping turtle is one of many turtles that scientists have been monitoring for the past 10 plus years. All these turtles carry sensors and researchers track their movements in real time. That's how they found out that year after year, the turtles follow the same route from their summer stomping grounds to their winter hideouts, tight underground mud pits where they can wait out the cold weather. Moreover, they're so predictable in their habits that they get back to the same place every year. But what happened to the turtle in the photo? Well, by the looks of it, it just overslept. Yeah, I can get it. The turtle sat too long in the mud when its kin got to the surface long ago and went about their business. Moreover, it dug so deep that scientists thought the sensor was lost and the animal was gone far away. Turned out the turtle just likes a good nap and wasn't in any hurry. Of course, it's rather weird to expect a turtle to be in a real hurry, but why would turtles dig into the ground in the first place? I mean, I understand it when it comes to winter, but why do this in summer? Well, turtles don't like the heat either. They're cold-blooded reptiles whose bodies can't withstand prolonged exposure to high temperatures, so they have to burrow into the ground. Cool earth helps keep body temperature at the right level. At this time, the turtle's metabolism slows down and it falls into a deep sleep. Roughly the same thing happens in winter when the temperature drops, only the turtle's sleep becomes even deeper and longer. It's called brumation. It's like hibernation only for reptiles, slow metabolism, no need to eat and all that. However, even such ancient and tenacious creatures like turtles have their drawbacks. For example, they don't have an alarm clock. For their own safety, turtles sometimes burrow deeper, but the longer they sleep, the denser the ground above them gets. Just imagine, you didn't get up on time and that's it, you gotta dig yourself out now. Keep in mind, there's a risk of literally suffocating to death. In the spring, when the turtles come out of their hibernation, they're like one big muscle spasm due to the buildup of lactic acid. To get rid of it, they need to warm up. To warm up, they need to get up and reach the sun. But how do you do this when you can hardly move? It's clear that in this state, the turtle is easy prey for any predator that can pull it out of its shell. And if the turtle doesn't move for too long, then the amount of lactic acid can become critical. After this point, it's no use trying to get out at all let alone this big chunk of earth on its back. By the way, Steve, how big was that chunk of earth? Ah, I see. The weight of the turtle was about 13 pounds, and the 10-inch thick chunk of earth on its back weighed 18 pounds. Still, the animal moved without any problems, as if it had been carrying such weights all its life. And then there's a question. How can these turtles live for several months underground without any access to oxygen? This is one of those questions that remain a mystery to scientists. I mean, I get that the metabolism slows down and all that, but they still need to breathe. Turtles may rely on underground air pockets, but that's still not enough. Most likely the answer lies in a turtle life hack, which everyone would probably like to have. These animals switch their metabolism to a different mode. I'm not talking about its speed or inability to eat fast food without the risk of gaining weight. Turtles just go into oxygen-free mode and start burning body fat, sugar, stuff like that. This leads to waste products forming in their bodies, like the lactic acid I've already mentioned. However, the turtle body itself comes to the rescue. It borrows calcium from the shell and neutralizes the acid, maintaining a healthy chemical buildup. This protects the animal both outside and inside. Alas, no hard shell and no amount of metabolism tricks will help if the turtle spending winter underwater sleeps too long. Yes, turtles can actually spend month after month at the bottom of a lake and feel quite comfortable. Moreover, water bodies freeze gradually from top to bottom. And if the winter's not quite severe, then only the top layer turns to ice. Together with the snow, it isolates the water below, and at the bottom, turtles sleep peacefully and wait for warm weather. But if the entire reservoir freezes, things can get bad. In January 2016, China experienced severe cold. In some regions, the temperature dropped below minus 53 degrees Fahrenheit, and turtles were submerged in ice right in their aquariums. The water around the animals froze, trapping them. 
Some of the turtles managed to raise their heads in time, while others were much less fortunate. People from all over the country posted similar photos and asked for advice on how to save their pets. Turned out it's actually possible to thaw the turtles. For example, put them in warm water, then wrap them in a towel and let them recover. It really worked for some individuals, but not for all of them. Under normal conditions, turtles can't stay frozen for long and remain alive. They go through the same experience as other animals. If the turtle freezes entirely, ice crystals form in its internal organs, which hurt them. However, if the turtles are in shallow water and the ice crust only forms on their shells, they may still be alive. Not for long, but they can survive if the ice is removed in time. Does this mean that a turtle sleeping too deep at the bottom of the lake can sleep through the deadly danger of freezing? Turns out it can. By the way, fish face similar problems. Take for example these ones. Yeah, these fish are dead. At the same time, they're frozen into a vertical wall of ice about four feet tall. This picture was taken in South Dakota at Lake Andes, where a particularly thick layer of ice formed on the surface in winter. It was covered with snow from above, and this didn't allow sunlight to penetrate down below. The lack of light prevented algae and aquatic plants from photosynthesizing, so the oxygen level in the lake dropped. As a result, the fish suffocated, died, resurfaced, and got stuck in the ice. Well, then there was too much ice, it bumped into the shore, and turned into a wall of fish ice cream. And this is, in fact, a common phenomenon that occurs literally everywhere. When ice forms, it prevents water from exchanging oxygen with air, and oxygen levels slowly drop. Because of this, fish can actually suffocate. They simply can't survive without oxygen even in winter, so they reduce its consumption to a minimum. But if the winter lingers on, the fish have to rise closer to the surface, hoping to get at least a little breath. As a result, they risk simply freezing into the ice and dying, or as I said, suffocating and also dying. In short, both options aren't exactly great. In this regard, wood frogs proved to be much better adapted than other animals. They came up with antifreeze. During the cold season, wood frogs don't migrate to a warmer area, but seek shelter somewhere on the ground, under the leaves where they freeze. And then when it's warm again, they simply thaw. All this without side effects. None at all. As soon as the first ice crystals reach a wood frog, its skin freezes. The frog becomes hard and crunchy as if it was candy. And this is not just a comparison. Special proteins cause the water in the blood to freeze first. This ice, in turn, sucks most of the water out of the frog's cells. At the same time, the frog's liver begins to produce a large amount of glucose, which packs into cells and props them up. Yes, the frog adds massive amounts of sugar into its cells so they don't get destroyed. Turns out there's a thick sugar syrup inside the cells, and all the water outside is frozen. The frog can remain in this state, that is, with no beating heart or brain activity, until it gets warmer. Then the water will slowly return to the body, the blood will begin to flow again, and the frog will come to life. But what I love most are the stories about squirrels that live on the ground. Tree squirrels don't hibernate during the winter. They have other things to do, like looking for where the hell they hid their nuts. But the ground squirrels act in a different way. Like the ones that live in the central and western parts of the United States. They can go into a suspended animation state for up to six months. Their temperature drops by a whopping 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That is, it can drop below the freezing point. In this state, the animals become like small fluffy balls that you can juggle. That's not something I came up with. I'm quoting scientists like Hilary Swere, a squirrel scientist. Just take a look at this baby. It doesn't care what the human's doing, how he bends it, what he shows, and where he puts the thermometer. The animal's just sleeping. However, if you think the idea of juggling sleeping animals is great for some kind of party, then keep this in mind. Many of them have bubonic plague. Yes, the disease that once wiped out more than half the population of Europe. So be careful. By the way, gerboas in the Moscow Zoo are actually kept in the fridge. I mean, they're alive and kicking, but these animals enjoy the winter hibernation in comfortable, cool conditions. In the wild, gerboas dig their holes below the freezing point of the soil and the temperature inside remains practically unchanged. Such conditions can be simulated in the fridge. Every week, zoologists check whether gerboas are fine, 
The animals are weighed and checked to see if they have enough weight to sleep until spring. If the rodent loses weight, they wake it up and feed it. And there's a legitimate question. If people are in charge of waking up animals in the zoo, then how do they manage to do it without any outside interference in the wild? Especially if oversleeping often means dying from the cold or getting stuck under a huge layer of earth. Nature didn't give an alarm clock as we understand it to wintering animals, but instead it gave them an excellent internal clock. It counts how long the animal has slept and when it's time for it to wake up. By the way, we got a similar mechanism. After all, we can roughly estimate how much time we slept and whether we had enough sleep. Another option is the resources of the body that the animal accumulates before hibernating. As soon as the animal runs out of them, its brain gets a signal that there's nothing more to absorb and death is imminent. The animal wakes up and goes looking for food. You know that feeling when you open your eyes and you feel it's breakfast time? It works roughly the same way here. But animals, unlike us, sleep much more efficiently, I'd say. They do this to wait for the right conditions. If we could do the same, it'd solve a lot of problems. First, we get a chance to travel in space. People traveling long distances in space, say to Mars, will have to remain sedentary for long periods of time. Putting astronauts into a state of artificial hibernation and then waking them up on the spot is the perfect way to speed up the process. Like scrolling past all the boring stuff and going straight to the point. And secondly, this skill would help reveal the secrets of longevity. Hibernating humans could live in extremely stressful conditions, and their bodily adaptations could certainly provide clues to the diseases that appear as the human body ages. Do you realize the potential? Perhaps in the future, people will learn to hibernate for any time they want. For example, when waiting for our next video. Okay, I'm just kidding. You won't have to wait for it that long. See you later.